I'm with uh, Richard Blanco, whose new collection of poetry is um, looking for the Gulf Motel. Correct. And and you also had an event back in January, right? Uh, in oh yes, yes, that's <laughs> something in Washington D.C. I, I recall. <laughs> Richard was uh, selected by President Obama to be the inaugural poet, and right. you, you wrote a poem for that event. Correct. And that was uh, for all of us, one day, uh, one today, an inaugural poet's journey. Um, this is a book, though, right? That's a book. That's, that's a, a, book. That's a uh, sort of a, a sort of a mini memoir of the whole experience of the inauguration of writing all the poems and of, and of the whole emotional and spiritual and creative journey of from getting the phone call all the way and even post the inauguration of some of what's happened to my life since then. So you got the call from Obama's people, right? Yeah, not, not yeah. Barack himself. No, 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 no. Did the first thing, uh, of course you said re yes right away, right? Well, yes. Um, well, it took me a while to kind of, at first I thought it was a, someone playing a practical <laughs> joke on me and that ran through my mind. And then I couldn't quite get what they were saying and I thought maybe it was to read a poem at the White House or something. And then, and then it's finally I said like, well, like Frost or like Maya Angelou and they're like, yes. And, and of course, being, being the protocol of government, they, they asked me, well, we were just wondering if you're interested and if you were available on January 21st. And I was like, <laughs> Let me check my calendar. <laughs> they had sort of, sort of no idea what that really meant on the other line, at the other end of the phone line. So, yeah. And then after you'd accepted, did you say, "Oh crap! How can I rise to this occasion?" And, no, you know, oddly enough, I had a, I had a, uh, about a five minutes of like. Oh, I got this. You know, mostly because most of my work has always been dealing about, well, you know, questioning what is America, what is American dream, what is my place in America as an immigrant um, and as a child of exiles and as a gay man. And so, I, you know, I felt like I had been toying with the subject matter a long time. So at first I was like, uh, for like five minutes, I was like, I got this. <laughs> but, but of course, it was a whole different kind of poem, even though the, the, the subject matter was the same. So the, the approach to it was, of course, something that was new. Well, most of us heard it, Anybody, anyone who watched the inauguration. And uh, it's a beautiful poem. And I was struck by the incantatory power that you achieved as you went through Thanks. this fairly long, fairly long poem. Yes, it's right? a long poem. Yeah. Even for me, it's a long poem, yeah. yeah. And it's a celebration of America. But it challenges a little bit. Yes. Yeah. All intentional, right? Yeah. Uh, did were there were there poems that you wrote and discarded uh, well, for for the? There were there were tons of drafts um, or even beginnings of drafts because of the time constraints of three. I had to write three poems in three weeks. They asked me to write three to uh -huh. consider. So yeah. as soon as something wasn't hitting the mark, being, you know, in an hour or two, I just dropped it and went on to the new thing. So I didn't throw any away, but I did. I did manage to write the three that I thought were are, are pr pretty decent poem, and they're all included in the new book, which they have never been published before. So, um, and they're all totally different, which uh -huh. is something I set myself out to do. So, uh, I think uh, I think there were several drafts of one today, but it's one of those things. You know, when you hit the right moment, and then it's just a matter of revising and working towards the best copy you can come up with. So. Um in this book, An Inaugural Poet's Journey, do you give us the behind-the-scenes look of what yeah, happened? A, a yeah, a lot of the behind-the-scenes. I'm, I'm amazed that no one has ever written it. I mean, part of the reason I wanted to write it is like, nobody's written this experience that only five people have ever had in our history. Um, and so a lot of the behind-the-scenes, a lot of uh, stuff that I didn't want to, a lot of the stuff that wasn't tasteful, or, or I should say wasn't pleasant for me, I didn't put in. It was a very positive book, but it, yes, a lot of the behind the scenes. In some ways, part of the motivation was almost, I hope this serves as a little kind of like a handbook for the next inaugural <laughs> poet, because they really, you know, you don't know, we don't know what to expect really for a poet to, on that scale, you're not really prepared to, to know what's coming. Um, but, and a lot of it was the stuff that never came out in the interviews, you know, usually in those, Five minutes, even though I did tons and tons of media um, around the inauguration, you know the background story, the emotional story, the real underpinnings of what went into that poem from here, from my heart and from my soul, um, isn't usually the stuff of of, of, of five-minute interviews. So, but so it's there in black and white now. Yeah. Well, you know, when you were when you were reading the poem, you know, I've known you for a long time. I've read a lot of your your poetry. I know I know your story and. Um, I felt like you, you compressed so much of that into this poem. I mean, maybe it's because I knew you, but you know, the immigrant experience, the, the gay experience, right. uh, it's a remarkable piece of work. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, what's he like? 
what's, what's, a, really what's the president like? Yeah. Well, actually, I didn't quite hang out with him um, <laughs> in the inauguration. And in my infinite uh, you know, ignorance, I thought we'd be at the ball, and I'd dance a little salsa with the first lady, and maybe he and I would have a martini and talk about the poem. But of course, that's not the way it goes. But I, did, I was invited to the Oval Office for a private meeting with him in May. And, um, and, and that was, I was more nervous for that than for the inauguration. Um, he's just, as, he's exactly what you see on TV, perhaps even a little nicer in the sense that he wasn't, I'm not there for any kind of political agenda, so there was none of that. And uh, he seemed kind of like the guy next door very much. Uh, at the end of the meeting, we even hugged it out, you know. <laughs> he showed me the back office. We gave him a broadside of the poem, and he said he was going to put it in his back, sort of the, his private study in the back of that secret door through the, not secret, but that sort of funny door at the end of the Oval Office yeah. where they really do their work, and uh -huh. not at that desk. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. So he, he was very open and candid and, and, and very nice, yes. You were the first Cuban-American poet? Cuban American um, inaugural poet. Yeah, um, and and the first, first Latino, the first immigrant, Latina. the first engineer, the first uh, gay, the first um, you name it. I was <laughs> the first one with bushy eyebrows. You were <laughs> representing a lot of communities. It's <laughs> yes, a lot, a lot. Yes, yeah. um, that must have given you a sense of pride. You're, you're representing these communities who yeah. um, who are you know no longer on the on, none of those are not even the engineers. Are, are on the margins anymore. Those are all yeah, uh, gay, Latino, Cuban-American, yeah. all in the center of the American experience now. Yeah, it was wonderful to, to be that. I mean, I'm, I'm one of those people that I, I may be like the, the odd man out, out but I, I loved wearing those hats. I mean, I think that's my story. I, I, I think my, my purpose then is to fill in the blanks of those stories for people so that, that's, that you're not just looked at as a label, but that rather that those labels do have some meaning. I mean, I am the first Latino of gay, you know, naughty boy, call me that, you know, that's fine. <laughs> I have no problem with that. But what was interesting is that, that at first in writing the poem, there was sort of this sort of self-imposed pressure that I felt I had to write a much more sort of politically charged, uh, you know, sort of angry poem, sort of a Ginsburnet, Ginsburg, Esque poem versus a Whitman esque poem, uh, and um, and I didn't because I realized that what my rep what my selection represented to America was really powerful, and it would have been almost redundant to uh -huh. overstate uh -huh. that myself. So I went for the for the visionary moment in that poem for something that speaks about well, yes, we are all these different people, and I represent a lot of different people, but we're one. I know? hadn't thought of that. Your selection was a political statement in itself. In it, you know, of itself, yeah, yeah. yeah it was. Uh, I didn't. I felt I'd, I. I don't write overtly politically work, political work anyway, and I mm -hmm. thought it would have been disingenuous to begin with. But there was a moment there. I was like, I got to say this, or I got to say that, or I got to say the other, or I'm not going to be. I thought people were looking to me to say those things and actually they weren't it was just the selection that meant so much to so many people just and, the mere and, fact. and of course you represented your family they must yeah. have just yeah. been unbelievably proud yeah yeah that, that, that was part of the tricky part of the poem um, you know as the poem over the months or almost a year now I realized how much as you were saying earlier how much of that poem is in of me there is in that poem in, in even in between the lines and I think part of part of what I felt I needed to do the inaugural poem was to be vulnerable myself in the poem, not to pontificate as a poet, saying, you know, this is who we are or should be, or, you know, but rather that I am one of those people in that sea of people that are going about their day. My mother is one of those people. My father is one of those people. Um, I come from the same space that this poem is speaking of. Yeah, you still have a main. Yes, I'm still yeah. in Maine. <laughs> so you, you know that Miami still claims you, right? Yes, yeah. and, and, and Maine's been doing that. I, I've, <laughs> I've reasoned it this way. I'm, oh, I'm a son of Miami, and Maine is my adopted home. <laughs> <laughs> Richard Blanco, the new book is For All of Us, One Today, An Inaugural Poet's Journey. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks for being with us, Richard. My pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> How are you?